Hello and welcome to UGC e Shala project. I'm Dr. Suikar Lama, Assistant Professor in Criminology and Police Studies at Sardar Patel University of Police, Security and Criminal Justice, Jodhpur. I'm going to present the module on scientific methods of investigation, including the use of computer. Let us begin with a brief introduction. In today's world, criminal investigation generally takes the help of a number of scientific methods to solve a case. The scientific method is applied to garner valuable information from physical evidence taken at crime scenes. DNA samples from hair or body fluids, fingerprints, analysis, weapons or clothing fibers are studied using scientific methods by forensic experts. Forensic scientists are responsible for collecting evidences, however minute or major they may be. They also have to properly analyze and classify them, document the observations scrupulously and take precautions to ensure that the evidences are not tampered with or improperly handled. Due to the specific nature of expertise, they are frequently summoned at courts to provide expert witnesses on crime lab methodologies or their scientific observations relating to any criminal trial. Forensic scientists' work involves close coordination with law enforcement attorneys and medical examiners besides allied personnel. In contradiction to those seen on TV channels, few forensic scientists visit crime spots while a part of them work in forensic laboratories and certain others work in universities, hospitals and morgues. Scientific and technology play major roles in the development of crime scene examination besides criminal justice. Scientific methods are used to restructure a crime scene for analyzing physical evidence which helps to reduce the quantum of misapprehension and manual inaccuracies. There are various scientific methods used in criminal investigation. Now we will discuss about these methods. One of the methods is fingerprinting. Fingerprint identification methods have been used by crime investigation to identify suspected criminals as well as the victims of crime. The weapons and stuffs at criminal signs, scenes generally have chances to have fingerprints of people presented in crime scene. Since the fingerprint patterns are unique for each individual, they are attached matched to identify the criminal. Another method is DNA analysis. Deoxyribonucleic acid DNA, is a nucleic acid which contains the biological and generic information for all known living organisms. The DNA samples can be collected from body parts like blood, tissues, hair, etc. Crime scenes are investigated to find the DNA samples for various purposes like in some cases to identify a dead body or identify a culprit in rape case. Another method is gunshot residue. Gunshot residue is composed of burnt and unburnt particles from the explosives and components from the bullet, the cartridge case and the firearms used. While investigating any crime occurrence, the forensic experts apply gunshot residue kits, GSR kits, for determining the elements like composition of granules and patterns revealed by deformation of bullets. Blood stain pattern study is another scientific method of investigation. Forensic experts study the blood stain patterns to find out the circumstances under which the impact object would have been used with to hit the victim. The angle as well as the direction the bullet would have trailed along the distance from the source towards the target which can be easily explained with the help of blood stains spread in the vicinity of crime scene. Another method is voice analysis. Voice identification is the process of comparing two or more voice samples in order to determine if the two voices are consistent with one another. All voices have unique characteristics that are determined by an individual's vocal cavity. Because of it, it is possible to analyze audio recordings using various methods and tools to scientifically compare two recorded voices. This process involves an intensive vis visual analysis of the audio information as well as an extensive auditory analysis. Increasingly, law enforcement agencies are using a technology that measures voice stress, small frequency modulations in the human voice that supposedly occur whenever someone is lying. Another scientific method which has often been 
highlighted in high profile cases is polygraph or lie detection. The instrument typically used to conduct polygraph tests consists of a psychological recorder that measures the three indicators of autonomic arousal, heart rate, blood pressure, respiration and skin conductivity. Most examiners today are computerized recording systems. Rate and depth of respiration are measured by pneumographs wrapped around the subject's chest. Cardiovascular activity is assessed by a blood pressure cuff. Skin conductivity called the galvanic skin or electrodermal response is measured through electrodes attached to a subject's fingertips. The recording instrument and questioning techniques are only used during a part of the polygraph examination. A typical examination includes a pre-test phase during which the technique is explained and each test question reviewed. The pre-test interview is designed in to ensure that subjects understand the questions and to induce a subject's concern about being deceptive. Polygraph examination often include a procedure called a stimulation test which is a demonstration of the instrument's accuracy in detecting deception. Severe questioning techniques are commonly used in polygraph tests. The most widely used test format for subjects in cr criminal incident investigations is the control question test CQT. CQT compares responses to relevant questions, example did you shoot your wife with those of control questions. The control questions are designed to control for the effect of the generally threatening nature of relevant questions. Control questions concerns misdeeds that are similar to those being investigated but refer to the subject's past and are usually treated in scope. For example, have you ever betrayed who trusted you? Apart from these scientific methods, there are various branches of forensic science which aid in criminal investigation. Forensic chemistry, including toxicology, forensic life sciences, including serology and entomology, forensic physics, including ballistics and documents, Forensic psychology, including narcoanalysis and brain mapping. Forensic odontology, forensic anthropology. Computers as a scientific method for investigation. Cyber policing may refer to the usage of information and communication technology, ICT, in policing to prevent and control crimes as well as the policing of cyber crimes. A safe and secure online environment enhances trust and confidence and contributes to a stable and productive community. Information and communication technology ICT is an integral part of our daily lives. Whether people have a computer at home, the online banking services or simply receive electricity supplies, the community's reliance on technology is increasing. ICT impacts on law enforcement because of the way in which it can facilitate both lawful and unlawful activities. Crimes such as fraud, scams and harassment can be facilitated by using technology which brings unique challenges to old crimes. The use of computers in law enforcement has changed and developed rapidly, especially in recent years. Computers are used to hold databases of information to run sophisticated software that can recognize faces or identify fingerprints and to connect to the web, an avenue for communication and a rich source of intelligence as well as desktop computers. Law enforcement personnel also use mobile devices such as laptops and tablets to do their job. These are the ways in which policing and the cyber world get intertwined with each other. Let us discuss some of the uses of computers. First use is database. Computer technology allows law enforcement services to store and retrieve vast amounts of data. This information can include details of incident reports, criminals' descriptions and fingerprints and other identifying marks. It can also include description and registration of vehicles involved in criminal activity. Another crucial pool of information is DNA database taken from suspects. DNA databases allow samples of DNA taken from suspects to be matched with samples taken from crime scenes. Second use is sharing of information. Computers are an invaluable tool for communication between individuals, departments and law enforcement agencies. 
documents, photographs and other material can be sent almost instantaneously from one location to another saving valuable time. Email is a good example. Encrypted emails can be used to send important data securely while mitigating the risk that the information they contain will fall into the wrong hands. Another use of computers is in crime scene computing. Mobile computing devices, laptops, notebook, computers and tablet PCs are very useful to law enforcement. Armed with a laptop, a police officer can take notes, access records or contact colleagues in other districts all without leaving a vehicle. Mobile devices can be used to check the identity or other credentials of individuals at the scene of crime as well as recording and tracking what data such as vehicle license plates. Computers can also be used to track the position of GPS devices helping law enforcement officers to find vehicles. Another use of computers is the internet. The internet is used by law enforcement agencies in innumerable regards. Websites can be used by law enforcement agencies to educate and inform the public, appeal for information or alert people to ongoing situations such as missing child or a felon at large. Because criminals often use the internet to share information, it can be very useful in crime prevention and detection. For instance, those responsible for a crime sometimes incriminate themselves by discussing it on social sites such as Facebook or Twitter. This information can be used to prosecute them. Let us talk about other aspects of computerization of investigation. The high performance communication between the members of investigation teams, interrogation, databases from different so areas, monitoring and recording telephone conversations, and data transmission, the computerized processing of the traces resulted from the field of crime, crime mapping, computerized portraits of offenders, restoring facial image of people according to some parts of the cause, and even virtual reconstruction of the mechanism of occurrence of some crimes are today only a small part of the contribution that computerization brings to the investigation of crime. The usage of computer technology has made possible the collection, processing, organizing, storing, analyzing and accessing in an increasingly short time, almost instantly, a huge amount of information. For this purpose, there have been created various databases, records of persons, vehicles, weapons, the papillary impressions of the prosecuted persons, criminal record, modus operandi, etc. by the authorities involved in preventing and fighting crime process. Along with PC, laptop, it allows today the organization of investigation activities through total interconnectivity. Therefore, using Bluetooth protocols, Wi-Fi, RDA, and even GSM or CDMA, Edge or 3G, and also orientation, GPS protocol, interceptions and audio or video records are very important means to combat and prevent crime, given the current state of progress of technology diversification of modes of operation and overcoming the boundaries. The interception is possible either by implanting a microphone in the machine used in communication in or in its vicinity, intrusive surveillance, which implies a direct action on the tool used by the supervised people or in the environment where the call took place or by intercepting the waves issued in the communication process and the decryption non-intrusive supervision from the PBX phone line or by direct action on the transfer of the message using portable interceptors means with the in the range. The information that can be intercepted eventually recorded records on the same one hand the source or the receiver phone number used the identity type of phone and the identification elements example IMEI series the location from which the call was made and on the other hand the call itself and especially its content, date and time of call duration, the sent message. Actually, we must mention that the information on corruption or organized crime would be very difficult to check using methods other than the audio and video interception. A particularly interest regards the prob problem of online searches on the computer system as a way of investigating crimes, especially because of the need to identify, establish and preserve evidence in cases that regard different types of acts that are committed using the computer, such as cybercrime 
author unauthorized entry in the databases, infiltrating viruses or delete databases, files, parallel files, etc. Now let us talk about the limitations and problems of use of computer in scientific investigation. Computer forensics integrates the fields of computer science and law to investigate crime for digital evidence to be legally admissible in court. Investigators must follow proper legal procedures when recovering and analyzing data from computer systems. Unfortunately, laws written before the era of computer forensics are often outdated and cannot adequately assess the techniques used in a computer system search. The inability of the law to keep place with the technological advancements may ultimately limit the use of computer forensics evidence in court. Privacy advocates are especially concerned that computer searches may be a breach of a suspect's human rights. Furthermore, and as methods for encryption and autonomy grow, more advanced technology may be abused by helping criminals hide from their actions. Ultimately, the role of technology in computer forensics may not reach its full potential due to legal boundaries and potential malicious intentions. Computer forensics has been indispensable in the conviction of many uh, well-known criminals including terrorists, sexual predators and murderers. Terrorist organizations may use the internet to recruit members and sexual predators may use the social web networking sites to stalk potential victims. However, most criminals fail to cover their tracks when using technology to implement their crimes. They fail to realize that the computer files and data remains on the hard drive even when deleted allowing investigators to track their criminal activity. Even if criminals delete their incriminating files, the data remains in a binary format due to data remnants of the residual representation of data. File deletion merely renames the file and hides it from the user. The original file can still be recovered. Eventually, data may be overwritten and lost due to volatile nature of memory, a storage area for used data. A random access memory chip, RAM, retrieves data from memory to help programs to run more efficiently. However, each time a computer is switched on, the RAM loses some of its stored data. Therefore, RAM is referred to as volatile memory, while data preserved in a hard drive is known as persistent memory. The RAM is constantly swapping seldom used data to the hard drive to open up space in memory for newer data. Over time though the contents in the swap file may also be overwritten. Thus investigators may lose more evidence the longer they have since computer data does not persist indefinitely. Fortunately computer scientists have engineered equipment that can accompany the computer's contents without turning on the machine. The contents can then be safely used by lawyers and detectives for analysis. Global Position System GPS software embedded in smartphones and satellite navigation systems can also be used by law enforcement agencies by tracking the whereabouts of a suspect. Since companies that develop software for computer forensics also develop products for satellite navigation, they are well equipped with the tools and technology necessary for acquiring GPS evidence. However, the evidence that can be recovered from GPS software is limited to only a list of addresses. Current GPS software does not record the time when the address was archived, whether the address was inputted by a person or automatically recorded or whether the owner's intent for entering the address was associated with the crime. Despite these limitations, GPS evidence has still been crucial in the success of many prosecutions. In one famous example, four armed suspects accused of robbing a bank in the United Kingdom were convicted because each suspect owned a vehicle whose sat-nav held incriminating evidence including the bank's address and the addresses of the other three suspects. The Scottish National High Tech Crime Unit searched a suspect's TomTom, -tom, a GPS device to obtain thousands of addresses that the vehicle passed by. Many of the addresses turned out to be the scenes of criminal offenses. In 2011, US forces successfully found the Pakistani compound where Osama bin Laden was killed by tracking satellite phone calls made by his bodyguard. 
While GPS evidence on its own may not be enough to establish a motive, GPS evidence can still provide invaluable leads or confirm a bunch, for example, contact uh, lists, language, preferences and settings all may be used to establish a suspect's identity or identi identify accomplices. Evidence from GPS software and mobile devices can be a valuable supplement to other forms of evidence. Some criminals have grown more cautious by hiding incriminating data through encryption techniques. However, according to Andy Spiral, Senior Director of Risk Management for Guidance Software, most criminals don't have the knowledge or patience to implement encryption software on a continued use basis. The minority of criminals who do encrypt their files may only use partial encryption. If only a few files on a hard drive are encrypted, investigators can analyze uncrypted copies found elsewhere on the device to find the information they are seeking. Furthermore, since most computer users tend to reuse passwords, investigators can locate passwords in more easily desirable formats to gain access to protected files. Computer data are also oftentimes redundant. Microsoft Word makes copies each time a document is modified so that deleting the document may not permanently remove it from the hard drive. With so many forms of backup, it is difficult for criminals to completely delete incriminating computer evidence. While investigators can exploit computer system glitches to obtain evidence, technological limitations can often compromise a computer search. A common protocol for handling a mobile device found at a crime scene is to turn the power off. Investigators want to preserve the battery and prevent an outside source from using the remote wipe feature on the phone's contents. When the phone is turned off, the phone cannot receive test text messages and other data that may override the evidence currently stored in the device. However, turning off the device has its own consequences, potentially causing data to be lost and downloaded files to be corrupted. To solve such problems, computer engineers have developed technology for shielding a device from connecting to a cellular carrier's network. Computer forensic scientists no longer need to turn off the device to isolate it. For example, radio frequency shielded test enclosure boxes helps keep signals from entering or leaving the device. A Faraday bag used in connection with the conductive mesh can also isolate a mobile device. Using these technologies, investigators can safely transport mobile device to the lab while the device is turned on. However, GPS software and Faraday bags are not foolproof. A cell phone isolated in a Faraday bag may adamantly search for a signal depleting the phone's battery power. When searching for a network, cell phones are also losing data. According to Professor David Last of University of Bangor, Wales, errors in locating signals may range up to 300 meters when obstructions are present. While 95% of GPS measurement fall within a meter, 5 meters of the true position in clear and open areas, large geographical barriers and skyscrapers may severely block and reflect satelliting signals. Interference from the weather may also disrupt signals. Criminals even purposely use jammers to disrupt tracking systems. Investigators must carefully audit communication channels and monitoring systems used in tracking systems. In doing so, they can better avoid skepticism from the jury, being able to give a clearer and more precise estimate of the amount of error afflicting GPS measurements. Otherwise, the defense can suppress the GPS evidence if the measurements are significantly faulty and unreliable. Generally, investigators must first obtain a search warrant which is typically given by the court in order to obtain and preserve evidence that can be easily destroyed. Searches without a warrant incident to arrest are permissible because they help to prevent fragile data of evidentiary value from being lost. They 
consists mostly of scanning the device's contents using the keyboard and menu options. More advanced searches incidents to arrest may include the use of a mobile lab, which allows for the immediate download of cellular phone data. If investigators want to conduct further post-arrest forensic analysis, proper legal authorization must first be obtained. Proper legal procedures are often vague and burdensome for investigators, especially since laws may vary from country to country. Some countries may have a stricter policy regarding warrantless searches. In United States versus Park, the court ordered the, that since cell phones have hold a greater quantity of data than pages, its contents are less likely to be lost. A warrantless cell phone search is they're thus necessary and unjustified. Similarly, in United States versus Hall, the court decided that searching through information stored on a cell phone is analogous to a search of a sealed letter. Even if investigators manage to obtain a search warrant, the evidence they find may still be suppressed if their forensic procedures fail to follow legal procedures. For example, looking through unopened mail and unread text of not carefully documenting the chain of custody may constitute an improper search. With so many boundaries and inconsistencies in the legal system, it is often difficult for investigators to successfully perform their jobs. Different state and national legal systems play computer forensics as well as when an Estonian was charged with computer crimes in 2007, Russia refused to provide legal cooperation because it had not criminalized computer crimes. Yet Russia received severe distributed denials of service attacks for its lack of cooperation. In addition to faulty legal system, the accessibility of advanced technology may be afflicting computer forensics. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, defined cyber terrorism as a cyber attack using the exploiting computer communication networks to cause sufficient destruction to generate fear or to intimidate a society into an ideological goal. As computer systems grow, more powerful criminals may also abuse computer systems to commit crimes such as software theft, terrorism, and sexual harassment. For example, stalkers can abuse the Tor project, an anonymizing tool for victims of cyber crimes, to safely report abuses and in instead hide their identities when they commit crimes of harassment. The technology is too advanced for the digital trail of cyber crimes to be tracked. As encryption programs grow stronger and more popular, forensic investigators may no longer be able to decode the hidden digital evidence. For computer forensics to progress, the law must keep pace with technological advancements. Clear and consistent legal procedures regarding computer system searches must be developed so that police and investigators can be properly trained. All an international code of ethics for cybercrime and cyber terrorism should also be established to develop protocols for obtaining and preserving evidence maintaining the chain of custody of that evidence across borders and clearing up dif any differences in language issues. Following these measures may be the first steps to resolving the technological and legal limitations, afflicting computer forensics. Interpol, the International Criminal Police Organization, has developed a computer crime manual with training courses and a rapid information exchange system that serves as a foundation for international cooperation. Lastly, the criminal abuse of technology can be limited by equipping the police department with state-of-the-art training and equipment for forensic analysis. Only then is the world safely prepared to face the future of technology. As one author predicts, the next world war will be fought with bits and bytes, not bullets and bombs. Now to conclude, in today's world, the scientific methods of investigation attain greater importance. It gives an opportunity to the investigators to collect evidence, analyze them and bring better results. 
It also helps in the interrogation of suspects and revelation of truth without using methods of torture like duress and coercion. It also gives the opportunity for the law enforcement agencies and prosecution to prove the guilt of an offender in the absence of witnesses or in the case of witnesses becoming hostile.